What's up everybody? Chris Blevins here. Welcome back to the channel. It's early October and we are on the hunt. We are out here looking for the yellowtail. We're looking for the white sea bass. We are looking for the halibut. We're looking for big fish. We're gonna stay focused all day on catching something big, something good, and hopefully sharing some insight with you guys on how I was able to find it and the tactics that I was using to make it happen. It's probably six in the morning. Sun is not up yet. But we are just past the gray light, about to hit dawn. I am already tanked up on greenbacks. I was able to make a ton of bait in the dark. Um, it's a full moon night last night, which typically is not great for the bite, but uh, there was plenty of bait congregated in the area that I was looking. I was able to make a ton of bait and I'm already tanked up, so I'm gonna get on the hunt. I'm gonna put out a fly line and drag it around here and I'm gonna start looking for some marks. And I got my reverse dropper loop ready to drop and also heavy iron ready to drop. So we're gonna troll a fly line all through this area and we're gonna start heading out towards the corner. We're gonna head outside and we are going to see if we can find some of the schools. There's been some big schools of yellowtail popping up in the afternoons, but it sounds like the afternoon bite has been slowing down. And so maybe it has transitioned to the morning. This is extremely light crowd out here. I think I see about five kayaks out here now. So where are you guys at? I guess a lot of people assume that summer is the time when the yellowtail fishing is the best, but I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Really, summer is the fisherman's time that is the best. The season for yellowtails all year long, and a lot of the best fish I catch are in the cold in the middle of the winter. Um, and fall, October this time, can be some of the best fishing all year round. Um, but a lot of people aren't coming out because they think that uh, the yellowtail and, and these trophy fish are are a summertime thing which is not true but the summertime i guess is the fisherman's season not the yellowtail season so where are you guys at get out here We're putting out our fly line. We're gonna get on the troll. We're looking for marks. We're gonna stay kind of close to the kelp edge, hoping for that early morning white sea bass on the fly line. And we're gonna work our way towards the corner. We're tanked up on bait. Everyone else who's just getting out here now is looking for bait and there's none of it to be found here on the reserve line. So I think these guys are gonna be struggling for a while. I made my bait at the pier in the dark. So I'm already tanked, I'm already fishing. Sun's not even up and I already got baits in the water. We're in the game, guys. So early October, it's the beginning of the fall transition. Still have some pretty warm water. It's 70 degree water. We haven't hit the time change yet. So the sun's coming up super late. I think it's like 630 and sun's just coming up now. Uh, but one thing you guys need to know about fishing in early October, late September, is it that it's the beginning of the California spiny lobster season for both recreational and commercial lobster fishermen. So it can be a lot of fun. Uh, you guys can get out there and do some hoop netting for lobsters or you can do some free diving for lobsters. Make sure that you look up the, the uh, California regulations for uh, spiny lobster fishing, some pretty hefty fines if you're caught poaching or uh, taking short lobsters or not following the rules for the lobster fishing. Um, but another thing that you need to know when you're out here kayak fishing in La Jolla this time of year is that the commercial lobster traps are out here. And uh, those of you who fish California regularly probably know about these traps. Uh, it's basically a buoy that's on top and there's gonna be a long line that goes down to the lobster trap. Um, and this can present a big problem for uh, recreational anglers because when you guys catch a big fish, especially if you're not ready with heavy line and your drag set tight, your fish are gonna run pretty far. 
and they will typically run to structure rock piles reefs ledges kelp which is also the places that the lobster hang out so these lobster pots are going to be placed really close to this structure which is right where your fish is going to run to so so many people who start to fish this time of year and who aren't really ready for it you can really lose your fish really easily in these lobster pots even more crucial this time of year and you guys always hear me talking about fishing tight drags fishing heavy line and putting a lot of pressure on these fish to steer them out of the structure steer them away from anchor lines and other anglers but this time of year it's especially important with these lobster pots out here last thing you want to do is you might have been fishing out here all summer and you're just waiting for that bite you know trying every day watching my videos staying committed staying committed to the target the last thing you want is when you finally get that big bite to have that fish swim into the lobster pot wrap it up and it's gone either the dog will come eat it or you'll get slack in your line or it'll wrap the rope and you're gonna lose your fish so again can't emphasize this enough especially this time of year when there's a ton of lobster traps out here tight drag keep a lot of pressure on the fish and fish some heavy line i know it's the sp the sportsman way is like you want to try to fish as light a line as you can you want to play the fish you want to have a fun fight that's long and a long epic battle the longer that fish is on that line the longer you're fighting it your chances of losing it just go up and up and up although it may feel unsporting I would rather fish the heavy line and maybe get a few less bites, but I'm gonna land those fish. I'm gonna power that fish up. I'm gonna keep them out of the structure, keep them away from the lobster pots and be able to land them a lot more frequently. So keep that in mind this time of year. You guys really need to, and I'm not saying avoid the lobster pots. These lobster pots are on structure. They're on reefs, they're on ledges, which is also where the fish and the bait fish are. So you might wanna fish right next to these lobster pots because that could be where the fish are. But you're not going to land them with that bite if you're fishing 20 pound and, and 10 pounds of drag power them up go up to 40 pound go up to 50 pound fish a lot of drag and uh stay right on top of the fish you don't want that fish running way out to the side you want to stay right on top of it so your line is, hor is vertical up and down and it'll really increase your chances of landing that fish once you finally get that bite that you've been waiting for so that's just a little tip for you for this time of year So even though it's early fall, maybe fall transition, uh, it's still super hot out here. It's gonna be a heat wave this week. The sun's up already, there's no marine layer, and it feels like it's about 80 degrees out here, so it's gonna be a real sunny day. I'm gonna go ahead and sunscreen up now while it's early and I'm not super sweaty. I got some of this homemade zinc oxide sunscreen that my wife made. This doesn't have any of those toxic chemicals that are harmful to ocean life. Um, as you guys know, maybe some of you guys have traveled to Hawaii or other places with coral reefs. Your commercial sunscreens can be really harmful to the environment. And so you can't even use them in Hawaii or places with coral reefs and you shouldn't. So why would you put something on your face that can poison you know, the ocean life? This is a really easy to make homemade sunscreen that has a zinc oxide base and some other natural ingredients. If you guys are interested in this homemade sunscreen and how my wife made it, let me know in the comments and maybe we can do a video on how you can make this own, your own sunscreen at home. But I'm gonna go ahead and screen up right now because as you can see with this glare, it is hot and sunny out here already at 7 a.m. I don't know something cool and better for the environment why not right and save some money too i think you can buy the ingredients on ebay or on amazon make it yourself and uh, save some money and do something good for the ocean so we talked a little bit about the lobster pots and how you should be prepared to fish around them and just be aware that they're out here during this fall transition time uh, but here's another tip for you guys i get a lot of questions from people who are asking about 
how do I find fish? What should be my strategy if I don't have a fish finder or any electronics whatsoever? This can be a pretty good time for you anglers without fish finder. Um, and it's because of these lobster pots. So these lobster fishermen aren't just placing their lobster pots randomly throughout La Jolla. These guys, they're putting, typically where they wanna put their pot is on a sandy flat that's right next to a ledge or a rocky structure, okay? And as I mentioned before, that's a place that these fish are gonna be feeding up on bait and uh, ambushing bait and, and congregating. So if you don't have a fish finder and you don't have a GPS, you, maybe you just have no idea how deep it is, where you are, where's a good place to fish. I'll tell you what, these lobster pots are a great indicator for a place that you should actually try to fish because these lobster pots are on rocky, they're near rocky structure, they're near ledges and drop-offs, and they're gonna be placed in areas where the structure is favorable for all types of marine life not only bait and game fish but you know kelp and, and all sorts of other things so if you have no fish finder whatsoever and you're wondering you know you don't know how deep it is you don't know where to go like go look at some of these lobster pots you could be out in 150 feet of water and it's just you know blank ocean floor just giant sandy uh, no man's land but then you come up on an area where there's like five lobster pots in a big cluster well guess what there's a big rock pile there and that's a place where the fish are going to be you could do some rock fishing there or some bass fishing the yellowtail are going to be there too because the bait are going to be in that area so if you don't have a fish finder and you're wondering where should i fish where do i even start start at the lobster pots if you see a big group of lobster pots in one area there's a really good indication that there's some side of type of structure or reef there and that's a place where you should try to fish now it's going to be really easy to lose your fish when you get hooked up because the fish is going to swim into that structure and into that lobster pot so again tight drags heavy line but look for those lobster pots as a way to indicate where the structure is okay and even if you do have a fish finder or a GPS, but maybe you don't have any good waypoints saved, or maybe you want to, maybe you're a rock fisherman and you, and you want some good rock piles and stones to do your rock fishing on. Well, this is a great time of year for you to mark some of those GPS. Did I lose it? Did I lose it? Come on. Come on. Oh, feels like a fish. Feels like a fish. Swimming towards me. Wine, 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 wine. Wine, 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 wine. What is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, what is it? Kind of feels like a bonito. Feels like a big bonito. Yeah, that was a good bite, but it's a bonito, unfortunately. Nice size one. All right. Dang it, well, I got my hopes up, but not what I'm looking for. Good size Benito, maybe five pounder. Make some good sashimi, but uh, yeah, not what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and let this guy go. Well, all right, that was an exciting bite. Thought for a second it might've been the right kind, but uh, I'm not looking to keep Benito today. They can be good eating. Uh, poke or sashimi, especially if you bleed them out, put them on ice right away. I do have some ice in my hatch. I'm looking for a, something else. So uh, one thing with the bonito, you guys, if you guys get lit up by a bonito like that, definitely check your line. Those bonito have sharp teeth. They can nick your leader, especially near the hook, especially if they inhaled the hook. This is a circle hook, so the fish can inhale it all the way and then it'll pull out and then hook in the corner of the mouth. I'm checking my leader to make sure there's no nicks or cuts because the last thing I want to do is hook up a big yellowtail or white sea bass 
and have a nick in my line and then break off. So my, my leader feels nice and smooth still. I don't feel any nicks or cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this same leader to put out another fly line, but make sure that you check your leader after catching those toothy fish because um, especially if you have Benito chewing up your, your line all day, uh, you're gonna wanna retie every time you feel that nick because you don't wanna lose that real fish when you catch it. But that was an exciting little bite, kind of interrupted me in the middle of my tips that I was giving you, but uh, let's put out another fly line and get back on the troll. If I keep getting lit up by these Benito, I might stop trolling the fly line and focus more on the dropper loop to stay, stay down low. For those of you who are targeting them, yeah, they've been pretty good out here and this is a good time of year to get them, so let's stay on the move. Okay, so, so as I was saying before I was interrupted by that feisty little Benito, um, if you're a rock fisherman or you're someone who likes to, you know, target calico bass or sand bass or, or rockfish, these lot, and you, maybe you have a GPS, but you don't have any good waypoints saved. Maybe you don't have any good rock piles or reefs. This time of year in the fall transition when these lobster pots out here is a great time for you to get some GPS coordinates saved in your fish finder. Because as I said, these pots will be clustered around a rock pile, structure, ledge, what have you. So you want to go over them, see if you can find the rock pile on your fish finder using your 83 kilohertz frequency and save those in your GPS coordinates so that later on in the year, even after lobster season is over, you'll have those rock piles marked on your GPS. You can go back to them at any time, whether you're looking for yellowtail, white sea bass or rockfish. So, take advantage it's almost like these lobster fishermen are giving you their coordinates they're letting you know where all these rock piles are where all these stones are pay attention pay attention to if you're in a huge open area where there's nothing around and all of a sudden there's 10 lobster pots right over in this you know 50 yard circle area there's a big reef or structure there go ahead and go over it see if you can find it on your sonar and then mark the waypoint on your gps so you can come back to it later Maybe some of you watched my video about five things that you need to know before you find it, before you buy a fish finder. In that video, I covered a lot of information about how a fish finder works, the types of frequencies that you want to use, uh, and the things that you want to consider before you make a decision to purchase your fish finder. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link above for you guys to check it out. So while I'm out here, I'm on the fish finder, I'm scanning, I'm trolling around. I'm not necessarily stopping in an area. What I'm doing is I'm scanning the area. I'm going in like a zigzag pattern and I'm moving all around. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find what is the fishiest looking area. Ideally, I want to mark some fish. I have not seen any big fish on the sonar just yet. And I'll show you guys if I do see some. But right now I'm just trolling around through all these lobster pots maybe between 80 to 130 feet, scanning all over. Um, and I'm using 83 kilohertz to look for bait and to look for fish. So let's go through some of my fish finder settings that I'm using today. So as you can see, I'm on 83 kilohertz here, okay? I'm cruising around with a full screen of 83. I'm not doing GPS right now. I'm not doing 200 kilohertz. I'm not doing downscan. I'm just looking at this big screen. Um, I have the amplitude scope turned on, which is this bar on the side. That gives me the raw signal of what the return is hearing at the time, okay? So now, let's take a look at some of my settings. Right now, I'm in my range is set to auto. Range is kind of what tells you what depth to look in. I could lock it into a setting, but um, since I'm metering the bottom well, my auto range is gonna work just fine. I'm on 83 kilohertz, okay? I'm on sensitivity automatic plus one. My color line is set to 76%. In my advanced settings, I have noise rejection set to low. I have surface clarity set to low. My scroll speed is 2x and my ping speed is max, and I have the amplitude scope on. So those are the settings that I'm using uh, for scanning this area and looking for fish, looking for a fishy area. Uh, these are the same settings that I use the majority of the time. Some of you guys who have watched my other videos have maybe already tried those settings, but I would recommend to you if you have a Lawrence unit or even if you have another 
sonar that has a frequency somewhere around 83 kilohertz. Try those settings and see if they work for you in these types of conditions. Uh, seems to work really well for me. And as you can see, I got a really good picture. Let me know how those settings work for you. Okay, I think it's about 8.30 in the morning. I have been trolling this greenback all over La Jolla. Haven't had any more bites. Saw some birds pop up way far south off of like wind and sea. Chased them for a while, couldn't really catch up with them, and then whatever was under them sank out and the birds kind of dissipated. So we got some pretty decent downhill current coming from the north to south, going to the south. I'm pretty far out here and far south. I'm gonna start working back to the north, up towards the northwest corner, and see if I can get on some bait here. Have not metered anything that I thought was the fish so far. Did see a little action on the surface under those birds, but was not able to catch up to them. So I got my dropper loop here beside me, ready to drop. As soon as I see marks, I can drop this thing immediately. And I got my fly line out the back. I got my kombucha. We're on the hunt. I'm just gonna keep moving. I haven't really stopped and drifted. I dropped my dropper loop on a couple of bait clouds. Um, didn't have any bites. So I'm gonna head back up towards the corner and let's see if we can see some better sign. <sighs> All right, guys. Pretty slow morning so far. We're getting into the mid towards the late morning and I'm um, hoping to see some action pick up. We got some decent current. A bunch of dogs working around, but they're not really robbing my baits. Seeing some good bait marks on the meter here in shallower. Pretty slow air. I have not seen anybody hook up, but gosh, how about these conditions, right? Despite everything going on in the world, man, it sure is good to be, sure is good to be alive and out here. You guys like this or what? Seeing a few wakes up on the surface here. Probably just bait. I haven't seen any marks. I'm working this 80 foot contour. All right, guys. It's coming up on noon right now. How about these conditions, huh? Not a cloud in the sky and just glassy, calm conditions. I could see a mackerel fart from a mile away, but uh, not seeing anything happening, not seeing any yellowtail, haven't seen any mark. Still trolling my fly line, but uh, figure it was time to crack a cold one. Nice alpine duet. Try to keep me going out here. I'm gonna stick it out for a little while longer, but I'm headed inside slightly, seeing if I can find some bait, seeing if I can find some marks. I may try some halibut drifts here. If I don't start seeing something, but yeah, I mean, it's if they show up, I'm gonna see them. It's gonna be really easy to spot any activity on the surface. Right now, there's no birds. There's not a whole lot going on, so. gonna do it for this trip. Pulled the skunk, blank, goose egg, zip, zilch, nada, caught one bony. 
thought I saw the yellowtail a couple of times. School was not there, never marked them. Uh, it's about three o'clock right now. For sure the fish could pop up here this afternoon, but I don't have time to fish it. So I hope you guys like the uh, fall transition tips from today. Remember, there is no yellowtail season. Keep fishing all year. Stay focused on your target. Stay focused on your goal. You guys will make it happen. Stay committed. Let me know in the comments if you guys got your first yellowtail this year. I've had a lot of cool comments from people telling me that my videos helped them out. First time getting out here. Maybe you're from out of town, coming down to La Jolla for the first time. Got somebody, I'm gonna try to offload my bait. Got a guy over here. Looks like he has a Home Depot bucket for a bait tank. Good on you for getting out here. I'm gonna go see if he wants my greenbacks. I got like a dozen of them left. Yeah, I got it at the pier early. Uh, uh, you're on YouTube. Yeah, Chris. Chris Levin. Yeah, that's right. I, watch your shit all, I was watching your shit last night. Right on, dude. I watch your shit all the time, bro. Sweet. There's been a bunch of bonito around. Yeah, I got a couple. Some big ones, too. Yeah, I got some pounder in my bag right here. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was my third time, actually. My third time out here? Yeah, my first time I got my first yellow. Really? Yeah. Your third time? Third time. First time uh, last Tuesday, went out that corner and got bit on the corner outside. Sweet. Yeah, it's totally stoked. Oh yeah. Nice, got to meet a viewer of the channel. His name's Donald. Shout out Donald, nice to meet you bro. Congrats on that yellow. He said he got a yellowtail on his third trip to La Jolla. He's thinking about buying his first fish finder. Always nice to meet viewers of the channel, so. Cheers, brother. Hope you get them. Hope those greenbacks help you out, and we'll see you next time. See you at the launch.